I took some of my best tips of 2022 and put them all together for this video. Tips for beginners all the way to advanced producers, so make sure to watch all the way through. Make sure to subscribe, let's get into the video. Changing the pitch of the hi-hats. This is great for making your hats feel like they fit a little bit better in the track. Even just adjusting one or two semitones can make the track feel like it sits better in the mix. Let's just solo the first hat. Yeah, back on the Addressing the first hat, I just wanna change this transposition here. So I click on that and I can move it up or down with the arrow keys. So what you're listening for is just while you're changing the pitch that it feels like it just sits a little bit better or maybe you're just getting a better sound out of that hi-hat. If you go too far, it starts to sound a little wonky. So I would suggest going one or two semitones each way, but you can go as far as four or five usually without it sounding too off. Using waveform visual representation. It sounds really fancy, but really I'm just saying to use both your ears and your eyes. Hear me out, no pun intended. Using a program like Tractor or Rekordbox can give you a great visual representation of what's really going on in your track. If I zoom in here, I can really see the transient of the kick and I can see all these little details that I can't really hear sometimes. If you don't have Tractor or Serato, you can download Rekordbox for free, which also has visual representation, and you can change it into other colors to give you a better representation. Making sure that your mix is actually balanced. So I know it's easier said than done to get a nice, healthy, balanced mix, but sometimes it's not actually that your track is muddy, it's just that it's lacking clarity or power by being unbalanced. If the low end is too loud compared to the high end, it'll sound muddy because you're not really getting that clarity from the high end and if the high end is too sharp you're not getting that power from the low end and therefore your high end might just feel a little bit too ear piercing or a little bit too full and if your mids are too loud then the low end and the high end is going to feel flat so this can result in a muddy sounding mix even though technically it's just unbalanced side chain grooving uh, this is a really cool way of adding a little bit of extra swing and groove to your track using side chain compression so grab a compressor Throw that onto the hat channel and we will sidechain from the kick drum. And while the kick is playing, I want it to compress the hat just slightly so that it feels like it's just getting squished down just a little bit as the kick is playing. I'm going to exaggerate it so you can hear more of what's going on, but essentially it's going to push that groove even harder because it feels like that hat is kind of following the kick. Change the release settings. And then I'm gonna back this off so it's not so obvious. It just feels like it pulls and pushes just a little bit harder. Using Ableton's algorithms to bounce out your audio and then change the octave. Really cool, probably one of the best tips in this video. If I take this sound and duplicate it, freeze and flatten, it's going to change that MIDI into an audio file. Within this audio file, I can Double click, go into the transposition and change that up or down an octave. And that's going to sound different than if you were to change the octave in the actual synth. So let's go to the synth, change the octave down, take a listen. And then let's take a listen to the audio file that we took down an octave. So it sounds much grittier, much more aggressive. Sometimes this can sound even better than if you change the octave inside the actual synth. And it just gives you so many more creative options by giving you these harmonics from the sound that you might not be getting from the synth itself just by changing the octaves inside of the synth. Too much, too reverb, much reverb and, and, delay. and delay. This is a common problem that I see all the time. Adding just way too much reverb to your instruments can really easily flood up the mix and make it sound super muddy. If I take this lead, for example, you can see that I'm dialing in below 50% dry wet. My decay time is only 2.76 seconds and my feedback and dry wet on my delay aren't that much. Once I start pushing past 50% dry wet, I'm going to lose more and more of the original dry signal, which is going to make it feel more and more washed out and not as clear. But you already knew that. The big issue here is neglecting things like the low cut, which cuts out some of the lower energy of the sound so that you're not adding that lower muddiness that comes with certain types of sounds using reverb. Also, your decay times are maybe too long, which causes a lot of overlap. Binding delay 
and reverb does sound really great. And maybe your feedback and your dry, wet and your delay is long as well, but it can be overdone very easily. So next time you dial in your reverb and delay settings, maybe dial them into where you think it's appropriate and then back off about five or 10%. The more instruments you're adding reverb to, consider reducing the reverb or delay on the other instruments by just a little bit to give more room for the other reverbs that you're gonna be bringing in. By the way, make sure to check the description below. There's links to free checklists, a free sample pack, links to my one-on-one -on -one video coaching, which you can book a session with me, as well as links to my production courses that you can take to learn music production at your own pace. Layering your sounds with different cutoffs. If I take this first synth here and duplicate that, I can increase the cutoff in the first layer. I can go into the filter of the second layer and lower the cutoff of this one. Now this layer is split into two and I have more control over the lower and the higher portions of the sound, which gives me more options for creativity, EQing and mixing. Not only that, but together they kind of just sound more full because we're doubling up some of those frequencies. your mix is too busy. Adding too many elements is going to cause a bit of an overlap in frequencies, as well as sometimes adding too many things can be distracting to the listener. You wanna be adding in just enough that it feels full and interesting, but not too much that you're adding things that are distracting or causing just convolution and overlapping frequencies. I've added this extra loop to the track and at first it might sound a little bit more interesting, but it actually does kind of muddy up the track. It kind of pulls away from the track by not really allowing it to breathe as much. Let's take a listen. you listen to it the more dull it sounds and it starts to just get in the way of the rest of the track the idea is that you want to be bringing in enough instruments that it's sounding interesting and full but you're not just bringing in extra instruments because you think that it doesn't really sound exciting if you think the track is not exciting or that it's not sounding good Chances are it's not that you are not putting in too many elements, but the elements that you're working with aren't as good as they could be. So instead of just adding in more and more and more and making it feel more muddy and more distracting, and trust me, when you go to mix it, it's going to be more of a pain. Try dialing back what you have and figuring out what's really working, what's really adding value to the track. And if you can make what you have already sound catchier, groovier, and better before introducing more elements. I'm going to show you a couple little tricks that you can do inside Wavetable to make your bass lines or other synths a little bit more humanized and a little bit more interesting to listen to, especially if they're super repetitive. Let's go ahead and take a look. So I have this kick and bass line. But it's just the same thing over and over again. I want to make it more interesting. I'm going to go into MIDI inside of Wavetable and I'm going to turn up the filter one frequency, which I'm using to create this pluck. So I have my filter turned down, but then I'm going to turn up the random on here. I can turn it up all the way to 100 to let you hear what it sounds like. So it's going to randomly choose where on that filter it's going to put that frequency cutoff. If I reduce this to maybe 10 or 15% on the amount, we just get a slight change in every single one of those hits. It's gonna be a little bit more random. After adding the saturated sounds, the harmonics onto your bass instruments, it's a good idea to check that you're not getting a muddy signal. The mud usually accumulates between 100 to 300 Hertz. And by adding these saturated or harmonic signals, we can sometimes accumulate a bit of mud in this area. So looking at the bass bus now, I can see that I have this F sharp. I have this F sharp. I have this F sharp, so we have the three octaves here, but then I also have this C sharp here. The C sharp is added because of the harmonics that the saturation or the waveforms have added. Having this frequency can bring a bit of presence and warmth to the sound, but having too much of it kind of sounds a little bit muddy. So it's taking away the punchiness of the sound. It's sounding a little bit flatter now. So sometimes it's a good idea to just reduce this a little bit and clean up that midsection. 
A gentle cut around the 100 to 300 area can also alleviate some muddiness. Using rim shot, this is actually a really cool way of making things nice and punchy and adding some character to your sounds. And let's take a listen. So it sounds really cool. And you know what's great about rim shots is they are super punchy. So I can add a lot of punchiness to my sounds by using a rim shot as like a, a secondary layer and then adding that underneath like a clap or a snare. Drum bus made for drums works awesome on a lot of stuff. Let's check out this lead again and grab a drum bus. I'm gonna throw that onto the channel and right away you're gonna notice that it does sound pretty loud. <laughs> Essentially, it's an all-in-one saturation compression enhancement tool. So just by pushing up the drive, the crunch, and affecting the transients, you can get some pretty cool sounds and drive your sound a little bit harder to make it feel louder and more full. Kick not balanced properly. If your kick has too much low end or mids or even highs, it can throw off the clarity of the mix. It can make it feel unbalanced and you can lose a lot of the definition by having too much of any of those frequency sections. not just a baseline, but a percussive element over that baseline. This is really, really popular with toms and percussive hits and things that are going to bring out more content of that baseline without adding a lot of volume. Things that are more unique and different sounding. I don't want the bass frequencies because I have the bass frequencies in Wavetable and I want to EQ out all that low end. So I'm going to solve this percussive that is and how punchy and strong that is. I'm going to layer that with the Wavetable now and let's take a listen. fade in and fade out of your samples. Something I don't see a lot of people do is actually pay attention to how they can manipulate the sample just by fading in and fading it out, changing the length of the sample's tail and also how it attacks. I can actually fade in a little bit and make this a lot less aggressive. Just about 10 or 20 milliseconds. It's totally changed the way that that hat sounds now. It's a simple trick. Freezing your reverbs to make them into more interesting sounds. Insert an audio track. In that audio track, I want to change my external in to resampling. Hit the record button. I'm going to put my dry wet all the way to 100%. Once I hit record, I'm going to hit the freeze button, which is going to freeze that reverb sound. And I'm going to record that in the resampling track. And now I have this lead turned into a pad synth. Pitch modulation. You can do this in pretty much every synth, but I'm going to show you how to do it inside Wavetable. It's very, very simple. So I'm going to go into envelope two now to control anything inside of our matrix. And I'm going to bring this to K time down very, very quick, down to about 30 to 50 milliseconds. Then I'm going to increase the pitch here. So if I go into pitch on my target, envelope two, and I'm going to bring that up to 48. Now, when I play this bass, it's going to very, very quickly jump up in pitch and then drop back down to where it began. But over the course of the amount of time that we put, and if we're putting 30, 40 milliseconds, it's going to be very quick. And it's going to give us a sense of punch. Let's take a listen. I thought of 10 things that you can do right now that are going to make you a better producer for 2023. 10 things that would have saved me a ton of time if I knew them a lot sooner. Do yourself a favor and check out this video right here where I cover those 10 things and you'll thank yourself for it.